Hello, I'm Ed Fisher. I founded the Big Green Egg, and this is the story of how it happened. Let's start at the beginning. There were dry leaves, lightning, then fire. See, our ancestors began cooking dinosaurs with this exciting discovery. In the world of live fire grilling, well, that's never been the same. Well, Eggers, this is where it all started. It was almost 50 years to the day that I came to Atlanta, figured maybe this is a good place to launch a business. And I was just riding around, taking a look at the town, when I saw a for rent sign. So I thought, well, what, what the heck? I need a store. So I went in and the, happily the, uh, the owner of the shopping center was there. And I said, uh, is this store available? He said, yes, yes it is. I figured, what am I gonna do with all this space? I took a chance and the Big Green Egg story is full of chances that I took and I said, I will take it, and right here, this is where it started. But the story begins further back than that. Early cultures used dome vessels to heat food, except for the Propanians, who scorched their meats over volcanic gases, and the Pelotonians, who starved and disappeared from the planet while trying to unjam their augers. In the U.S., Kamado cookers first appeared when service members shipped them home from Japan, and that's how Ed Fisher discovered this way of cooking. He became interested in reselling them, and when he went to look at Kamados, he saw a pachinko game, which he thought might also sell in the States. In 1974, he began importing both and opened a small shop called the Pachinko House. So I was ready to go into business and into my small store that I had here. We carted in a few of these strange looking clay cookers. I can remember people walking up and down saying, poor fella, I never heard of this. He won't be here very long. This was 50 years ago. <laughs> to attract curiosity by passers-by, Ed Fisher simply placed a Kamado in front of his shop, put some chicken wings on it, and the delicious smell soon attracted the attention. So the day came, I figured, We've got to demonstrate this product. How else is anybody going to know what it is? So I dug deep into my small budget and brought back with me a couple of pounds of chicken wings. Within minutes, the aroma permeated the area. And to my surprise, they were amazed. The comments that I got, my goodness, I never tasted chicken wings as good as this. Finally, one bold soul said, I, I, think, uh, I think I'd like to take one. So that was my first sale. Bag of chicken wings, and 30 minutes later, I knew I was in business. Imagine that, 30 minutes from demo to sale. Clearly his future was in Kamados, not pachinko machines. This sidewalk demo and realization of how effective it was became key to the success of the Big Green Egg, and it's just as important today, 50 years later. You have to demonstrate. You can't let the, the egg sit inside the store and accept, expect people to come in and, and buy it. It just doesn't work. We found there was a big difference from those that would demonstrate and those that didn't. Was there a lot that they didn't demonstrate? It was just another item on their floor. And it didn't matter what the salesman said to tell them how good it is. Cooking on it was far more effective in every way. I don't know how many hundreds of Saturdays there were that uh, I'd get up early morning and buy a turkey. <laughs> bring it back to the store, prepare it, bring the turkey in and start to slice it off that vertical roaster. And the juices would just flow out of there. There would be oohs and ahs in the audience. As soon as, if one person bought, I knew I had them all, you know, but you, you needed one person to, to take the step forward, say, I'll, I'll take what now. Despite the great results, Ed's early clay cookers were fragile and not well known. Ed knew there was a lot of work ahead of him and yet he pressed on. There was no going back. I was 40 years old. I didn't want to go looking for a job. If this business didn't succeed, what would come next? It had to work. There were others out there who took a shot at selling Kamados, 
but they were not willing to put in the time and the work. And uh, when things were not going bad, they quit. I didn't quit because there was no going back. There wasn't that, there, there was no retreat. It was part of the reason. But the other is I saw we had a great product and I had the confidence that if we did it right, it would, it would take off. Fully committed to developing his product, Ed realized he needed to call it something unique. His inspiration came from a newspaper ad salesman. I knew what I had to do. I had to find a better name of, for Kamado. After all, who's going to remember getting a Kamado at the Pachinko store or a Pachinko at the Kamado store? Whatever it is, it confused people. And as a result, the ad produced some results, but it was lukewarm. So the day came, the Atlanta Journal rep uh, to pay his weekly visit, and we set up an ad to be run the following week. Before he left, I said, uh, look, I don't think this is working the way I would like. We've got to find a better name. Saw that they were egg-shaped, and I said, aha, we've got to start. It looks like an egg. It's certainly big. Now we've got to pick a color. My choice was green. Putting it all together, it came out the big green egg. Sounded good. I said to the salesman, great, we'll use it. And it's been the big green egg ever since. Now that the product had a name, Ed turned his attention to improving it. At first, his mission was to find better replacement parts. But yet, another twist of luck opened the door to a complete manufacturing process. And this enabled Ed to envision the best grill ever made. We knew we had something really, really important. But it was necessary to find a supplier better than the one that we, we now had. We looked everywhere. We looked in other countries. We looked within the United States. And then something very opportunistic happened, something very fortunate. In our searching for a new supplier, we contacted the ceramic department of Dior de Tech. We didn't even know they had a ceramic department. They put us in touch with a company in Mexico that was in the tile business. They had large kilns and they produced various ceramic parts for other applications. But they also were unfamiliar with what a Kamada was. Fortunately, Ed had an ally in the form of a friend and manager in the ceramics company who kept pushing the project forward. Delphine, he finally convinced management that we should at least try to make the entire cooker. That began the project of using their technical expertise to make the proper molds, to make the internal parts, to make the other things that go into a complete Kamado, all except the painting. That they, they didn't have an answer for. So the first shipment we got from Mexico were these unpainted Kamados. The color was a pale yellow. Well, finally we received samples of the new Kamado complete that they were making. And they were beautiful, perfectly formed. Things would fit properly and it would appear that we were ready to go. But there was two things that we needed. One, we needed hardware, and of course, we, we needed some type of paint to go over it. Well, we went throughout the Atlanta area looking for someone for just spray paint the Kamado with automobile paint. Well, it wasn't feasible because the cost to paint a Kamado was as much as the cost to produce the Kamado. So, that wouldn't work. It would seem that we were on a standstill. However, they went to work on the idea and they found that right in their very plant was a product called Fritz, which consisted of ground glass, which would subsequently be melted and provide the coating for certain types of tile. We got something that was far superior to the paint that we had cons been considering we had something that was permanent, wouldn't discolor, wouldn't wash off, wouldn't burn. It could actually carry a lifetime guarantee. The development of the ceramic egg was one of the most pivotal steps in the history of the young company. But Ed still had to deal with the perception of a fragile clay cooker. 
Inspired by brands like Craftman Tools with a lifetime guarantee, Ed made another big decision. It was at that point when we saw the quality of the, uh, the cookers coming from Mexico, we said, this is really well made. We could give a lifetime guarantee, not only to the paint covering, but to the whole Kamado itself. His sense of consumer reaction was right on. His product was now able to move into mainstream distribution and consumers were not afraid of it breaking. Ed also advertised aggressively in the newspaper, which was about the only way to advertise all those years ago. And some of these ads are true classics. At that time, the newspaper was probably the best source that I had, but I, I ran it consistently week after week after week. The same size ad sometimes uh, showing a sale, sometimes a new product, but uh, people used to look for that ad and people would come in three, four years later and had the ad folded up in their wallet and showing it to me. You know, this is how I found out about it. When these ads increased sales, a larger location became necessary. And so the business moved into its own building with room for offices, retail and distribution. This location also played host to a couple of Oktoberfests, another big part of the Big Green Egg history. We were very happy in that Lawrenceville building because uh, it had nice offices, uh, nice accents in the back of the building where we actually had a few Oktoberfests. Big Green Egg was first introduced. No one dreamed it would one day have its own holiday. But each year now, Oktoberfest brings together eggheads from all over the world to celebrate the great taste that can only be created with the world's favorite Kamado cooker. The recipe for Oktoberfest calls for one part ancient Japanese art, one part German festival, and a blend of culinary enthusiasm from chefs of all levels from around the world. And the foods are as diverse as they could be, but the common denominator is that everything is cooked on the big green egg the Kamado-style cooker whose growing popularity has developed into an unofficial society of big green egg owners. Some of them may call themselves eggheads, but these owners of the big green egg are serious about the distinct difference in quality when food is cooked on this cooker. Egg Fest and Oktoberfest are the essence of big green egg. All these cook teams out here you know, pouring their heart into making you this unique bite, and they might make it five or six different times over. So you walk around and you eat the most unique food, you know, showing the versatility of the egg and just having a great time. I mean, the, the fellowship of this event, this is what Big Green Egg's all about. Around 2010, after the company had been in operation for 35 years, Ed decided to step aside, and a new face joined the team. Artie Irani became the second CEO in company history. I knew that the the company needed to grow. I got to know Artie and I, I quickly recognized that he had a lot of the skills that would be necessary if we were going to uh, take our company to a higher level. It became my job to convince him that he belonged with the Big Green Egg. Artie brought with him a legal background, a mechanical background, because he had been involved with the, the racing industry and the financial background because he successfully run a company before. So uh, it was this combination of, of things that convinced me that he was the right person. I've enjoyed becoming uh, chairman of the board. It has allowed me to uh, participate in the continued growth of the business and uh, the actual operation of the business could not have been in more capable hands. It just worked out well. Thanks, Ed. You know, it's been a challenging, interesting, and rewarding journey so far. And you know, I've always told you, you left a pretty big pair of shoes to fill. And along with a fantastic team of people, we're working diligently to continue the legacy of what you started all those years ago. Soon after Artie came on board, the distribution center expanded again. The company headquarters also moved into a separate facility designed to accommodate every aspect of the growing business. From product development to creative services, a state-of-the-art culinary center and museum. This is the original Imperial Kamado that came from Japan and uh, very well made. And uh, this one happens to be green, 
with orange highlights. It came not only in this color, but it came in a multitude of colors, green, in black, in red, in yellow, and maybe some other colors as well. So there were a broad selection, and as far as sizes go, there was a multitude of sizes. I can remember instances where we had such a big selection that uh, when the uh, customer came in and yes, he wanted a Kamado, he liked the way he cooked, but confronted with all these sizes and all these colors, a lot of people couldn't make up their mind. So they left. We figured, well, we've got to make it easier for them to choose. As Artie reimagined all the possibilities, soon the egg had a new tagline as the ultimate cooking experience and embarked on an aggressive brand building journey that saw its footprint grow to over 50 countries throughout the world, including the UK, the European Union, Mexico, New Zealand, Canada, South Africa, Israel, Australia, and Colombia. A focus on innovation brought the 2XL, Minimax, the modular nest system, plus hundreds of new accessories designed to make live fire cooking on an egg fun, entertaining, and delicious. Well, one of the amazing legacies that Ed has given us to work with, of course, the product, the amazing big green egg, all the work he did developing it. And then there's the name, the big green egg. And did you know that the name is trademarked and registered in so many countries around the world? And the color green, by the way, also has a U.S. trademark for that color. So it's really a, an amazing body of work that took place over all of those years. And then we come forward to today, where the brand has now grown into what we call the wall of green. It's no longer an egg sitting in a, in a dealer. It's a complete wall of green, a complete line of products that are presented to the customer, presented to the consumer in a way that solidifies the perception of the big green egg as the ultimate cooking experience with accessories, with all kinds of things to keep you engaged and really let you have fun using live fire cooking in your big green egg in all kinds of ways. And the product development never stands still. During our 50th anniversary year, we'll reintroduce our chiminea, a popular item from 25 years ago, now back with a contemporary new design to enhance outdoor living areas with a touch of warmth. Other accessories in the pipeline are sure to excite Egghead Nation and will create even more opportunities to get outside and enjoy cooking on an egg. That's really what it's all about, isn't it? We bring friends and families together over live fire cooking to share culinary experiences and the delicious flavors that only a big green egg can deliver. You know, Ed Fisher realized that on the sidewalk 50 years ago when he cooked up those first chicken wings and the rest, as they say, is history. Well, Ed, after all these years, we thought we would commemorate that occasion. And Ed Fisher's famous wing sauce, this one's for you. Thanks for all you've done and we look forward to the future. In 2024, another milestone was reached as Artie Irani welcomed Dan Gertzko to the Big Green Egg as president. Dan is a lifelong enthusiast of live fire cooking and brings years of experience in the business world to the company. As we look back at the last 50 years as we've been doing here, it is just amazing to think all that has gone into growing this brand to where we are today, the efforts of distributors around the world, our dealer network, our partners, and of course, all the people at the Big Green Egg from day one, so many of them have put energy and passion into the brand. And as you look forward, you just can't help but be excited. You know, we've got 50 years behind us, but an awful lot ahead of us. <laughs> I have to say, Artie, what you and Ed have built over the last 50 years has been truly incredible. And I am very excited about the next 50 years. The future looks really bright. And as they say in show business, you ain't seen nothing yet.